strong force in the kingdom, a father to many, one that has insight, hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Um, he has traveled. I know about all his trips. And he had to come to Nigeria. Um, he was supposed to have arrived yesterday. But due to some circumstances, he came in today. <laughs> and because of the love that he has for us, um, instead of resting, <laughs> he has chosen to be with us this evening and tomorrow. So with great joy, I welcome Dr. Adonia Obunaya. All the way from California. Hallelujah. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory be to Glory be to God. It's good to be here. Uh, we didn't come here just, you know, just we just came here to have a conversation with you. The Lord is good. The Lord is good. Can you stand with me for a second, Ken? Kebabasi tele de bo shanderi de be kata in the tali anderi de osa. Nikova dini de tali be de koso torin de adaptarina. Sidi de hende seve kora tekele ato vere hakati. Simubati tele koriat kete de be seusiria. Receive rundo shadama batai kenenite. Yakudi de mele vero koso tiri andale baba baba shanda. Ikate eve de gose telinde ke mapata. Sati kor ke de berendi ya narute ke lebete. Sipro kosoi ya nde kama ende kurute. Libo saye ene de kosi mregete liba ando kuria. Lebo su yundo shki ya maseta shanda ya. Lebo roti lili handali ando ribota ibregos meti. Limosta ya kamazeta lambo shatara Lese muragete li andamo brede kente li enegese Na guso to ibe reke batala bo shatara Holy Spirit Kimano ime teru bo brogotko linde ene mada Lizadea angana nana ulova ribe deke skeke reke tiento roba Levoni me mehende ya kata alubogoska Zuria ne mazata zuria zuria. Lebro ondi atala lebro hande. Lemo sete libo rongo to shama. Imaska yarabanda la ba rongo shatama. Ile bebe hende riakata. Riko to lebo bo ando ko se raje raje. Se bonde yamare bo ruko tira ba 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 upragande. Lende sete parahande yene mondo lolo bo umbra hatapanda. Le sakute yende kete me selebe kete andara. Jurada zuri bragante le. Remo begede remo skenda ya. Inde ke zete eleba koko tiki libo sondia aramando. Risakaya bo sote. Ligotonda ya gandeli ya doska. Nanama de dito la varati. Kuluti titi mini medikiti biliburu rabakada brandele ya doa. Lord Yeshua, hamandele lebo sieke tele enderia. Lida babo se tele boske ye pato kante liaba. Immanuel, laska yende rebeke tele ende kuria. Ratala baba baba hande ya basa shalom. Mane mama ondori et kalaba. Ite te 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 kunto lobo sote karaba. Retungriata alago zende inime Ushate ko unushata kara Laku sote kelebo sondi andaya emo Urababababababa andaya elo toto ini satayi tata La udo vatai makana uva datai Zimadagu rose bregete Tende di anakol narak Lishanda yodere bababa andalaba Lo se te rike te yende riwa kosko te rianda. Master, lo se te kendele le boba sonde ria. Yande mwa onaya le mande le manda onande yesalahabo. Ayina yesofa yesofa. 
Yod he vave. Yod he vave. Yod he vave. Yod he vave. Echie ashe echie. Elohim Adonai Reborn Shell Olam Master of all worlds Yeshua Hamashiach Eternal and glorious Lord I worship you You. Be exalted in our midst. Lord, I honor you. Yah! Yeah. My Lord Jesus Christ. Bow my head, bend my knees. Acknowledge you as King. My King, my Redeemer, my Savior. Our King, our Redeemer. Our Savior, Master of all light, Master of all life, Master of all worlds, Master of miracles, Master of wonders, Master of sign, Master of resurrection, Master of ascension, Master, oh Rabbi, of authority, power, and dominion, Master, you are. Father, thank you. Lord, we approach by the blood of Jesus. 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 The blood, the blood, the blood, the blood. Step through the veil of the blood. Come through the frequency, the vibration, and the sound of the blood of the Son. Oh, blood of Jesus. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, precious Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, take the things of the Father and of the Son and reveal them to us. Call to remembrance every word that has been spoken by the Messiah. Word spoken before the world was created. Word spoken now. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you. Because without you, we are nothing. I am nothing. Have your way, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. We bless the name of the Lord. He is worthy to be praised. Glory be to God. As the deer panted for the water so much, so long it up to you, you alone at my heart's desire and alone to work. Say, as the deer, as panted. The world long enough to you, you run along at my heart, desire and along to worship you as the deer panted for. The water so my soul long enough to you. You are long at my heart, desire and I long to to worship you. 
Time you alone at my heart. You, my heart is alone to, to worship you. You are alone at my heart. Desire and alone to. To worship you. Say it one more time. You, you alone, uh, my heart's desire, you. desire and alone to worship you. Come on, one more I love you, Lord, and I lift my
Lord. The Spirit of the Lord is here. Yahweh's 
so it is. Oh, power. Oh, glory. Belongs to you. Immortal. Invincible. Oh, power. Oh, Him one more time. Oh, power. Oh, glory belongs to you. Say, immortal, immortal, invincible, invincible. Oh, power. Oh, power. Oh, glory. Belongs to you. Yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory. Yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory. Yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory. Adonai Melech Elohim Naman. Yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory. Yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory. Yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory. Adonai Melech Elohim Naman. Yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory. Yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory. Yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory. Adonai Melech Elohim Naman. Oh, yours is the kingdom. Yours is the kingdom. Yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory. Adonai Melech Elohim Naman. Oh, yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory. Yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory. Yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory. Adonai Melech. Elohim Naman, yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory, yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory, yours is the kingdom, power and the glory, don't I elect Elohim Naman, all power, all glory. Belong to you, immortal, invincible, all power, all glory belong to you. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Let's get to worship the Lord. Two weeks ago, I had an accident with my car on my way to my school. I just saw, saw angels controlling cars. Three tires at one time all busted because I somebody tried to run me off the road at about 4 a.m. in the morning. The night of one freeway in Los Angeles. But the Lord is good. I did bring my towel. So where is Pastor Samson? Got to look for my towel. It's either in the car or it's in the room there where I was. Pastor Samson. 
That was my first question to you. Do you have a face towel? Amen? When you sit down, put a smile on your face. When you act like worship is a, is a fight. <laughs> and you sit down and your face smile, frowns like, can I have this, this sound, the, 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 the echo, please? Very distracting. Tell my friends to, to get the echo down a bit. Francis, help me. And if there's other mics, let them be turned off. That's why. Turn the, turn the mic off. All right. Are we okay? All right, good. I'm so glad to be here. I'm, we're going to have a good time, right? You should know, you know, I've not been to Nigeria since my father passed. So I just, uh, I was invited here. And he's been trying to get me back here, you know. I've been traveling since August. Uh, I did travel the first half of the year. I traveled since August. Went to Singapore. How uh, did I start? Yeah, in the U.S. then, of course, went to Singapore, Malaysia, Indonesia, Philippines. And then this last month, wow. This last month I was in Indonesia. Uh, the, the, the last month I was in, in the beginning for the beginning I was in Indonesia New Zealand Indonesia Australia New Zealand China London and then back then went to Turkey and Russia just came back last week so the Lord is good the Lord do some great things around the world yeah, so we we're planning on doing a big conference in Dubai next year. See what the Lord does. The Lord is good. Amen? Amen. Thank God for Apostle and the woman of God who is in the U.S. And uh, for all of you, our pastors. I see people I know. Pastors, pastors. Um, thank you. God is good. Amen? We're here to talk about Melchizedek. I've, you know, I've been doing that teaching for a long time. So we're going to look at some scripture. Is that okay? All right. If you don't want to talk to me, it's okay too. I'll talk to you. <laughs> There's a distinction, and I'm not going. I've I've made up my mind that I'm going to teach with a low key voice because I'm old enough to do that now. You know, and things are happening around the world. You know, if, you, if you've been doing something for 56 years, you're not a child in it anymore. So all these little pastors running around thinking they know something. You know, and I, it's good. We all, we, all, we all were young sometime. But I think that a father who's been doing stuff for 50, in any field, if you've done stuff for 50-something years, you're considered a father in it. And I think that a lot of the you know, a lot of people, you know, have been in ministry for a long time. They need honor. My spiritual father is still alive, uh, Augustine Wadika. And I'm the person, one of the people, person that has never left the person that baptized me. The person that baptized me is still my spiritual father till today. I think that's the problem with Pentecostals. They don't know how to stay in one place. They think they know something. My spiritual father's name is Augustine Mordecai. They are the ones that God used to start the revival you are enjoying in this country today. After the war in 1966, well, I know many people don't want to hear that, but it's the truth. They, when After the war, 1966 war, we had no one to comfort us. We all were we were all were like orphans. We had seen bloodshed, young people. We'd seen bodies scattered all over the place. Every piece of ground in Igbo land was a was a burial ground. We all came came out. I was I happened to have gone as a refugee during the war. I went, my parents and us went as refugee to Cameroon. But all these young people that God used to start this stuff were young men who had seen death, death in a way that you will not imagine. You know, so after we finished the war, there was no one in the world to comfort us. 
You know, when I talk like this, some people from other tribes get upset. But you need to understand what God did in Nigeria. All of us came out of death. The revival you're enjoying today began in Igbo land. You may not know that. We were, all of us, there was, the oldest among us was only 20 years old. Augustine, them, they were 20 years old, 15 years old. We were kids that God used to bring a revival in this country. I have to say this, and I'll say this now to the people in the West. The gospel was in the West for almost 100 years. They never brought it to Igbo land. Is it truth? Catholicism was taking over Igbo land. Pentecostalism, the gospel, full, uh, false, whatever it is, Assemblies of God was in this place. They never brought the gospel to us. So when somebody wants to talk, they should talk. The North did not know the Pentecostal message. Because after the war, we as kids, the person that God used, some of the people that uh, is there now, uh, v, VY, the, the guy, um, his name begins with, what's his name? Uh, from from Port Harcourt. Mo, what's his name? I can't remember his name now. But these guys, all these young people, when we started gathering, we were part of the scripture union when the Lord filled us with the spirit. Kids, and we saw signs and wonders. When I tell people I've seen the dead race, they think it's a joke. You know, seeing stuff happen. So these guys, these young people started gathering. Mba, who was a university student at that time, just brought his guitar and started playing. After the war, we didn't know what to do. Nobody knew anywhere to go. And God visited us. And miracles were happening. We would be praying and shrines would burst into fire. We know we're not even casting them out. We're just praying. We were persecuted. Beaten. They'll come to church and pour water on us. Use use mound to beat all of us in church. My spiritual father and a lot of these other people, Mbadam, the first one, the first major Pentecostal. Now, please. I know I like my voice, but that is not you talking back to me. All right. So, but, but I, want, I, want to I want to tell you, I can't tell you all of the story. But when we, when, we, when we started that, everywhere was on fire. Young men, young women, you know. And, it was, and there was evangelism. It wasn't sitting in church and waiting for God to bless you. We walked roads. We walked hours. We were among the young people who, took the, who, took, who went to Joss. Simply the gospel were there, but once we came, the fire set up. We're going from house to house, preaching the gospel, praying for the sick. People on their deathbed were getting, waking up, getting up. Give you, you know. So after that, after that revival, the Igbos, the young Igbo guys who were businessmen, are the ones who took the gospel and the ones who were called took the gospel and went to the north. I planted the first Pentecostal church in what is today's Taraba State. I did in Jalingo. Preached in Bembu, Bambu, Pitigogeru, Gembu. Went to Kuma Hills in the 70s and early 80s. So when we talk about the gospel, I remember talking, coming here and preaching, and one young man was getting so arrogant, calling me names and writing on Facebook. It's like, you don't know what you're talking about. We suffered. If you know, you know Metatsine, you know, but nobody... Yes. So, it was, I was in Jalingo when they were killing Christians and burning churches. We had to run. We started, I was a founding member of the Christian Association of Nigeria that we started in Yola. <laughs> Same thing with PFN. But today nobody remembers that. We were kids. It was after the gospel got on fire that all these denominations started joining. We were kids. Just think, how old was I 
in 1970-71. I became a Christian in 1968. You were not even born, some of you. Yet yeah, the problem we have in Pentecostalism is the dishonor that follows where all young preachers and people think they know more than their fathers. They may know more than their father. But as our people say, that which an old man sits on the ground to see, a young person may climb the tallest tree and will never see it. And I'm sorry that these guys are not telling the story because they are so humble they're not talking. The people that are talking are charlatans who have never seen anything. All they have done is made money. But there are no signs and wonders in Nigeria anymore. There's really no evangelism in Nigeria anymore. Because it's evangelism that brings signs and wonders. I just came back from Turkey preaching to Russian Christians, watching people getting healed without me even touching them. May the Lord help the church in Nigeria because what's happened is people who are money hungry. Now, I believe in money, by the way, because I know what my God will not do for me, my money will do for me. I don't trust any human being to do anything for me. I'm a Jew. So when I said that people, thought, people, people here were laughing. When I'm accepted by rabbis in Israel, people in Nigeria who know nothing are, are laughing and thinking, you're lying. I have rabbis come to my church, sit in my office, and ask me questions. So, but I'm last not, you know, we'll not talk about ourselves. But here's the thing about, about, about what we're going to talk about. We're talk about the Melchizedek priesthood. I start that way specifically. Because there are things that happened in this country in the beginning, in the, in the 70s, which happened in the days of Ajay Crowder, but, they, but they, they got lost. And they became mixed with Amwansi. <laughs> See the Hebrew, Hebrew man in the place laughing. They became mixed with all kinds of traditional nonsense. But in the 70s, I remember this very clearly. The guy who was born, born waking, born Wajuku today, they were still young. I was in Wafo uh, and, and uh, Mordica. And some other preacher, I can't remember, a man, a man, a man was in, 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 in Atlanta. They drove to Kafanchang to have a crusade. This is true. During the crusade in Kafanchang, the hospitals were emptied. That's how Kafanchang became a Christian place. Because the chief said, when the Muslims complained, he said, you've been in this place for how many hundred years? And my people are dying of sickness. These people come for three days and all the hospitals are emptied. And as they were driving their Land Rover, leave the place, people were touching the Land Rover and getting healed. They will never tell you this. The things we saw I was a kid, so they were, they, were, they were grown up, but I was a child. Everybody talks about Papa Elton. I was a child listening to Papa Elton. Most of the people who call his name don't know who he is. These three guys were his real sons. He spent so much time in on with Idahosa. Idahosa, of course. And some people who are here who know what I'm talking about know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Papa Elton used to come teach us in Onicha. It's funny, we say, he would say stuff like, I'm speaking, we would have thousands of people. At that time, church, 10,000, 20,000 people. And he would say, I'm here and I'm speaking, and I think only, I'm only here for 15 of you. He said, because many of you will not catch what it is. Everybody talks about him, but don't talk about his prophecy. You know? Because, because, because there's tribal jealousy in Nigeria. Whether you like it or not, there's tribal jealousy. And now they're on Facebook doing the tribalism. One of his prophecy was, that's what he told us. That's why we took the gospel everywhere in Nigeria. We did. 
We are the ones that challenge the church in the West to start doing stuff. So how can you have the gospel for 100 years and not talk to your neighbors? Same thing that happened with Ethiopians. Ethiopians have had the gospel for 2,000 years and they never touched any part of Africa. What kind of stuff is that? The spirit of hoarding that takes a lot of African tribes and people. But anyway, just listen because you know, so these guys, when we, when, when, when God began to use us, I was not even, what how old was I in, in 70? I was 12 years old. <laughs> there was a young girl named Gloria. She was younger than all of us. She was witnessing with us, praying for people and they were getting healed. If we had camera and recording stuff, you guys would not be saying the things you're saying today. My first church that I pastored in Jalingo, I was there for maybe a few months and a boy died in the church. I didn't know what to do. His name was Gumwalk. I didn't know what to do. I just, I remember in the Bible, the Bible says Elijah laid on the boy. So I went and laid on the boy. He started breathing on him, calling him Jesus. And he sneezed. He was dead. The nurses say he's dead. There's nothing you can do about it. He got up. That's the only thing we're talking about. They're, they're all miracles. The, the problem is, because our fathers were more interested at that time in just talking about the gospel, just preaching, they didn't put, they didn't keep records. See, women in village, my own mother, God bless her soul, when she became a believer, had a crazy woman who was giving everybody trouble. <laughs> and the pastors were trying to cast out demons. And my mother had come out of prayer and looked and said, what are you guys doing? Oh, this and she just looked at the lady and said, set. And the lady sat on the ground and the demon left. We're talking about all the stuff we're talking about now. It was based on that revival that Nigeria became one of the highest economy in the world. Do you know Nigerian Naira was one Naira to 120, one, one dollar 20 cents. We, we moved. That, the military were scared of Pentecostals. If Abangida and the rest of them said, the only people who are scared in this country are Pentecostals. Now they've bought Pentecostals. They have their own Pentecostals that prophesy for them. Or like my, one of our, my uncles, I call him uncle because one of the fathers of the church, from whom I used to say, they've eaten shut up. So they don't chop shut up. Why? Because at that time, point, there was something about the move of God in this country. But it started from a people who had experienced extreme bloodshed. That's how God comforted the Igbos. Nobody gave us anything. It was the gospel that comforted us. It is what made the Igbos, think of it. We know about it. They gave us 20 pounds each. If you were more than a millionaire after the war, they gave you 20 pounds. Anybody here who can survive with 20,000 naira? Okay, let's say 200,000 naira. The houses that we built everywhere was taken from us in this Lagos. Some, a lot of the houses that some of these people claim to be theirs, they took from Igbos who had gone on exile. We know that. We're not trying to, well, this is not tribal stuff. But to look at how God brought gospel into this country with a people who had nothing. A people who had lost the war. I will, I, we went. We, when we were traveled to Gembu, it will take us from Joss, it will take us four to five days because the, the trucks will be hit. I was in the truck. And then we go... You know how many, how many trucks fell over that road with people going to try to preach the gospel up there? This is how the gospel that you are enjoying has, and I'm going to say it, a lot of the blood of Igbos who were killed in different places. 
in the north. Rising, Islamic rising, riot will rise in Kano. It wasn't because of Catholics. <laughs> it was because of Pentecostals. Because we were the ones that God was using to transform the society. We had a different sound. This is not about money. You want to make money, do business. It's okay. Make money. Ooh, I like money. If you say you don't like money, you're a liar. Say all this stuff. You both like money. You both like money. You don't like money, then go eat sand. <laughs> I like money. You should. Because that's how you're going to move the gospel. Okay. But anyway, why do I start like this? When God started in this nation, there was a fire in this nation that has not been duplicated anywhere else except Korea. Ours was first before Korea. Don't forget, this is where the revival started that impacted the world. Apart from Azusa Street, you know, and and the early revivals, there has not been a major revival that has impacted the world as the revival from Nigeria in the 70s affected the world. So what's the matter? I think the issue is that when we were young, God used us, you know, in a way that was amazing. I know, I know time. I know time. God used us in a way, but God did not want us to remain babies. You know the things that God does for you because you're a child. When we did miracles, we I mean, we thought we thought it was it was something. We I mean, you just you just raise your hand and God would do something. You get up out of prayer. I saw miracles, provisions. Miraculous provision. It still happens to me, you know. A few years ago, I came to Nigeria in 20... I think it's 2012. I came to Nigeria. God told me, you need to start going to Africa. I came to Africa. Because that faith was rising up in me. I remembered everything. God said, go. And I, go, and I got up. Came to Nigeria. Got to, to uh, Frankfurt. Don't have any more. The money I had in my pocket was only $200. And I had a headache. So I used $100, bought something, came here, went to a Jawa estate, went and checked in in a hotel with no money. I checked it because, I, because God said, you need to start going back to Nigeria. Wait, wait, just, we talk about Americans, we talk about the guy, right? I went, I went to a place, I, 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 I bent on my knees, I said, God, what am I going to do? How am I going to come to this country with no money? And everybody expect me to, because I just graduated, I will, you know, I was supposed to be, I mean, I, I had a job, but I lost my job. Da, 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 da. I'm praying, I'm on, I'm on my knees. I opened my eyes and right on my bed was a thousand dollars. So you cannot tell me about God's miracles. God has provided for me. <laughs> I have gone to, I've gone to pay, pay for ticket in those days with no money. It's not about faith. What are we talking about when we talk about faith? Who are we trusting? So who, why am I saying that? Because there's a difference between those who walk in the Melchizedek priesthood and those who walk in the Aaronic priesthood. Here's the issue. The church is now returning to the Aaronic priesthood because of all the legalism and, all, and the, that's what killed the revival in Igbo land. It moved from Melchizedek structure to Aaronic structure. What do I mean by Aaronic structure? It created rules and regulations and bound the Holy Spirit from moving. Because we, you know, You okay? It was amazing. But that's then. So what does God, what is, how does God 
wanting us to operate now. The things we knew intuitively, but we didn't know we know. We knew. I look back now, I go, there's some things we were saying that we didn't really understand, but it was really, really deep. So what's that one? Miracles, signs, wonders. It's a common attribute of any true priesthood, not prophets. Try it again. There were more miracles done by priests in Israel than were done by prophets. More records of prophets. Why? Because priesthood are based on sonship. Prophecy is based on temporary gifting. So a place where people lose their priesthood and become more prophetic, they lose signs and wonders and they lose miracles. They think they do and they become less transformative and they become less manifestive. And also, what happens to those kind of people is they cannot inherit anything because they lose the ground of their sonship. Prophecy is an incredible thing. But I'm not the one that wrote the Bible, right? The Bible says prophecy shall cease. Yes. But there's no place in the Bible that says sonship shall cease. <laughs> and there's no place in the Bible that says the priesthood shall cease. Sonship and priesthood are the two things that God in the Bible says last forever. But what we are emphasizing in Nigeria is the wind. Because remember, prophecy, most prophets, and by the way, Moses was not called a prophet. It is people that called him a prophet. Can I try again? Moses was called a teacher. And the Jews still call him today teacher, not Moses the prophet. Jesus was never called a prophet. Or can I try again? Only the Pharisees and the people said, great, great prophet has risen against us. But how many times do the apostles call him prophet? How many times does the Bible refer to him as prophet? Oh, by the way, sonship, priesthood, and teaching go hand in hand. The, the issue for us is we forget, we've forgotten how to be sons and we've forgotten how to be priests and we've forgotten how to teach and be taught. Think of how many prophecies you've received in your life. How many of them have come to pass? Yeah, don't look at me like that. You know it's the truth. Some of you are still carrying book of prophets, book of prophecy. I hate to break it to you, 99% of that stuff will never come to pass. Why will they not come to pass? Because they are not being drawn from your sonship and from your priesthood. Come on. Come on. Come with me. Why do I start like that? Because that thing about Melchizedek and the signs and wonders of Moses were based on the Melchizedek priesthood. Moses was a Melchizedek priest, not an ironic priest. Enoch was a Melchizedek priest, not an ironic priest. You consider Elijah just a prophet, which is what it is. But Elijah is the only prophet that acted as a priest. Where did he get his gumption from? Not from Aaron. Because as a prophet, he did not have a right to make a sacrifice. 
could have only made a sacrifice if he was drawing from another priesthood. <sighs> David made a what? Made sacrifice, structured sacrifices, worship, and offered sacrifices. He had no right to. Where was he drawing from? Melchizedek structure. The Melchizedek priesthood, if you look at the book, let me see the book. Both this, these two books and the other one too. These two books are on, this is on priesthood and prophecy. In which I debunk the idea that prophecy is the, is the, is the basic structure of the church. It's not. It's a sideshow. And this is Melchizedek frequencies. I got three volumes of this coming out. Okay. <laughs> not yet, not yet, not yet. But let's let's say, so what is the Melchizedek priesthood? Remember, I, I did all the stuff I did before to tell you that I believe that the way God started the revival in Nigeria is from a Melchizedek stance, groundwork. But that we lost our capacity for priesthood. We became prophets. Everyone is a prophet. And the problem with prophets is they don't have a problem killing the children of God. Think about it. So you keep running to prophets. Just don't run when they start dealing with you the way prophets deal with you. And by the way, we always conflate prophets and seers. We join them together. Okay, but they're not the same thing. Right? So, let me have fun with my, with my children. Do you know that the construct of Melchizedek is simply the priesthood of all humanity? That's what Melchizedek is. The priesthood of every human being that apart from the priesthood of Israel. Aaron's priesthood is an outgrowth of Melchizedek. It's not the other way around. Okay, let me begin by telling you something. The Bible says this. That Jesus Christ, oh, by the way, Jesus is not Melchizedek. He is not Melchizedek. All that nonsense, he's not Melchizedek. He can be. So when the Bible says that Jesus Christ, our Lord, Hebrews, you know, was what? Was initiated. That's the word. I know you Nigerians don't like the word initiation. But every Christian is an initiated person. Let me try the word again. Every Christian, and Nigerians take words that we need and mess it up. Every Christian is an initiated person. Were you baptized? Were you baptized? You are initiated. That's what, that's what it is. Pro baptism is an initiation. You took communion? You're an initiate. The Jesus are so scared of words. You know, you don't want to be initiated. That's what the word baptism means. Immersed. Initiated into. Come on. I mean, I know I'm, I know I'm a simple village boy, but words mean words. So let's talk about the initiation of Jesus Christ. Jesus is God. Before he became, there's a pre-existent structure of who Jesus is. In the Godhead, and I'm going to be nice, in the Godhead, 
There are three persons. Do we believe that? Or you guys? Okay. And the three persons in the Godhead are one. There's a Greek word called perichoresis. Perichoresis is the idea of what? Of an interpenetrative structure in which when you see one person, you've seen the other person. There's a dance between them. They are not, there's no conflation, but at least when you see Jesus, you see the Father. When you see the Father, you see Jesus. Then nobody ever sees the Father. Jesus is the way that God shows himself. It's from all eternity, Jesus Christ, the Son, is the way God reveals himself. So when you read the Bible, it says, And I saw God seated high. That's Jesus. You cannot see the Father. Are you alright? Okay, you're not alright. Okay, what's that? So, 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 Jesus Christ, who is the Son of God, who is God, is God by essence, by nature. You know, who participates in the divine dance, in the dance of light, in the dance of life, in the dance of love, that where God is complete in God's self, without needing any other stuff. So the Godhead can have a relationship all by themselves. Not needing, they don't need the world. They don't need the world to be created. God doesn't need the world in which you live. In terms of like, I need it if I don't have it. Now God created the world so that he might do something, so that he might manifest something. But that's different. So the Lord, the Jesus Christ, the pre-existent Christ, the Son of God, the eternal one within the Godhead, the Word within the Godhead became human. And he says, he was made a priesthood after the order of Melchizedek. You cannot be a member of a priesthood if you're not part of that family. Priesthood are not done by adoption. They are done by birth. If you don't have the blood, I am a priest. I am a koha. My family is the one that keeps the secrets of the Igbos. I came from Arochuku. We came to Enugu State. We carry all of that stuff. We are the ones. You know the story they tell, if you're from Aro, story they tell of a guy who was brought to be sold to slavery and had to be free. That's my ancestor. Yeah. So, I know stuff about Igbo. It was my father, my great-grandfathers who were going around when the British were fighting, informing the villages that the British were coming. So they caught my great-great-grandfather and sold him to slavery three times. You, know, you guys don't like this kind of stuff, but every time they sell him, he will disappear. You, th you, say, he's the, you say he's a demon. You can't, even, you can't even raise anything. You can't raise a, a broom from the ground. But everything else is a demon. We know it's not a demon. But you, but every Christian says it's a demon. No, if you say it's a demon, okay, then show me what's not a demon. Then we'll leave it alone. But, but he was sold into slavery three times. If, if you go to Arachuku and you tell the story of the man that was, was brought to be sold to slavery, and they told him to go to the marketplace and count everybody in the marketplace. And he came back and said there were only two people in the marketplace. And they asked him, why do you say that? He said, okay, and why? He said, men and man and woman. And the arrow knew that the answer, that's a secret answer. So they gave, put a calabar chalk on him and sent him back home and said, don't touch him, that's our child. That's why my name is Obon Naya. Arrow Juru Wanile. But anyway, you're an arrow man. Okay, he knows what I just said. But, but uh, th these histories are important. You know, not out of pride, but out of some things. To, 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 to get, there's a lot of stuff we condemned in our culture. We forget the reason the Europeans said everything we do is demonic is because they didn't want your spiritual gifting to be able to stop them from doing what they did to you. They didn't use gospel. It wasn't gospel. Because they didn't do that stuff everywhere else. They just did it to Africans. So Africans are stupid enough to just buy into it. 
Everything you guys have is from the devil. Everything the Europeans have is from God. Don't you just think? It doesn't take neuroscientists to understand this. How can somebody tell you everything? Inclu- Do you know there was a... T- you remember this? There was a time our leaves, the leaves in our backyard were considered demonic. Oh, come on. A man will go in the backyard and pick... pick herbs to give someone for medicine, they will say he's using a demon. Oh, come on. Some of you are still like that. My father was a herbalist. Do you know that because of what my father taught me, my wife is still alive today. What medicine they were giving her from the hospital was poison to her system. So I went to the botanical garden and started looking for herbs. And I was praying, God, let the, let the leaves speak to me. See, I don't even know that. Say, let the, let the leaves speak to me. Because, 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 because I don't know, I know the leaves in at home, but I don't know what they look like here. So I had to go to the botanical garden and say, let it speak to me. Walking around and this leaf started vibrating. And I smelt it. It was the same as the one at home. You can't tell me that God doesn't care. How did, how did, how was your ancestors taking care of his not God? Where did you find the devil taking care of anyone? When, it, when in your life have you seen the devil say, I like you so much, I'm going to give you life? <laughs> Unless Jesus is a liar. Jesus says the devil comes not but to kill and destroy. So if, and the Bible says, all good gifts, not some. All good gifts come from the... Why, why are we like this, bro? Why is it that the African gifting is always from the devil? If an African plays football very well, it's witchcraft. He don't go to village, go to Otomopo. Well, let's get back to Melchizedek. <laughs> Melchizedek is the mystery of perfected humanity. And he is is the priest. So for Jesus to be our high priest, he must participate in our life blood. When Jesus became human, he was now qualified to be our priest. He cannot be our priest as God. Bible says he was made a priest after the order of Melchizedek. It's an order that you have to be initiated into. But it's not the order of something. It's the order of human beings. Jesus participated in your humanity in order to become your priest, your high priest. He could not be an ironic priest because he's not part of that family. He can't. And God will be unjust to impose Jesus on the ironic priesthood. Because, and if God did that, then he's canceling what came first. Melchizedek priesthood came first. What talks of mysteries, right? So what is it then? So Melchizedek is the human being that, that God has seen before he created the world. You don't think God saw what the perfected human being is going to be like? You know, it's, in the book of Hebrews, this is amazing. Okay? There is no city called Salem. Jerusalem was named after Salem. But there is no city called Salem. Because what Abraham saw was a city that did not exist. That only showed up because Abraham was there. So Abraham was looking. Melchizedek was the priest that was coming. But it was all of humanity perfected standing in front of Melchizedek. Standing in front of Abraham.
is a human thing. Jesus became human. And it is in his humanity that he got initiated into our priesthood. And then he was made a high priest from our priesthood. What, 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 is the, what, is, what does that mean? What does it mean? Okay. Here, 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 here's, here's something that, that you may not know. Is that when God made man, he made man to be the priest, the son and priest in creation. When God made Adam, Adam is a son. And Adam was the priest. Who is the priest? A priest is one who does what? Who serves as what? As intermediary, a conduit between the realms of what? Of God and the realms of matter. An altar is a connection between this realm and the other realm. So the priest is the one who opens the matrix of the other realm to allow what is in the other realm to come to this realm. So the priest then is a vessel maker. Creates a vessel for what? For handling what is poured out from the realms of the Father. Or the realms of God. So Melchizedek appears to Abraham after Abraham had gone to war and was coming back, right? And we'll talk about this now, okay? Because there's a whole lot of stuff about, the, you know, the thing about us in, in Africa and everywhere, once, once somebody makes a statement, we all take it without thinking. Now the whole thing is attacking ties and talking all that nonsense. And I'm asking, I never said that ties, you have to tie to go to heaven. Anyone who taught that is a liar. But that, I don't know any preacher that was teaching that except those who never studied theology. It's an exaggeration. Maybe Papa Adeboye was saying it, but I never said it. You never heard any preacher tell you if you don't touch, you're not, you're not going to heaven. Now you're believing it as if that's what you've been told. Nobody told you that. Think about it. Whoever told you if you didn't touch, you're not going to heaven. This is what unbelievers and certain people are making up to make Christianity look bad. I don't preach it. Do you preach it? Do you preach it? Who do you know that preaches that? It's made up. And Christians are sometimes, sorry father, your children are sometimes so dumb <laughs> that they just take this stuff. Nobody teaches that. Maybe Adeboye said it because he's not a theologian. He came out of water church. By the way, that's what, that's what the church is. Thank God that they've moved towards Christian theology. Because I believe in transformation. I believe in repentance. I believe, I believe that T.B. Joshua, if he had lived, would have moved more and more towards the gospel. Because that happens. That's what this stuff is about. There's a power in the gospel. But you can, you can, you can use that nonsense that you started with as a way to tell us what we're supposed to be doing. He said that stuff. But you never said it. Did your pastor tell you that? Eh, which church have you been at? The pastor say, if you don't pay your tithe, you're not going to heaven. It's a lie. Nobody says that. He may have said it. And he has apologized. Let's go. Do you know that people just want to make the church look terrible? And you believers, you buy into it and you start saying it as if it is the truth. It's not true. Melchizedek, right, gave Abraham wine and bread. He took bread and gave to Abraham. The first thing he did was he blessed him. What do you say? Blessed this Abraham of the Most High God. The Melchizedek priesthood is not, does not need the ironic blessing, but it has a blessing of its own. Please read the blessing there. That's the blessing of the Melchizedek priesthood. Blessed 
are you of El Elyon? Blessed are you of most high God. Think about it. Most cultures call God the most high. So it's a human priesthood. The language in most culture who are not Jewish, God is most high. Because a lot of gods, right? He's the most high God. Which means this is the human understanding of what it means to be connected to God. Every other God is on the ground. So Melchizedek blesses him by the most high because Abraham was not a Jew. Abraham was not an Israelite. Abraham was a Hebrew. <laughs> he was an idol worshiper. Okay. Yes. He was an idol worshiper who stepped out of the idol and said, no, there must be a greater God than all of these gods. So he blesses him and then he tells, it's about three blessings. Please read it for yourself. So when come tomorrow, you can talk about it. The blessing that he gave to Abraham is a blessing that anyone who knows the most high receives. Then, then, then he did what? He brought bread and wine and gave to him. He reached out into what? Into the upper room. Or you can say he is the one Jesus was following. He gave bread and wine. Can I can I mess with you just a second? He gave bread and blood. He initiated Abraham into the priesthood of all humanity in a specific way. That are now allows Abraham to be able to bring forth the, the Messiah. Yeah. By giving him that communion. Let's call it what it was. By giving him that Eucharist. Let me use the Catholic term. Uh, Greek term. By, by giving him the bread and blood. Because you, you know, Jesus said, this wine is my blood. You can't deny that something was happening up there. A man who has no city, who has no beginning, has no end, has no father, has no mother, brings forth the same thing Jesus is going to talk about later on and gives it to Abraham. And when he gives it to Abraham, this is what Abraham does. He gives it to Abraham, Abraham gives him tithe. What is a tithe? See, that's the problem. Most people don't know what a tithe is. Anybody does computer here? Computer scientist. A tithe is a binary. The basis of all programming in the universe. Is zero one all ones is zero one zero one zero one zero 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 one one zero zero. It is the basis. One and zero is the basis of the structure of all programming, biological, organic, even rocks. But these guys who don't know anything are constantly thinking this is about money. So let's try with that stuff now. So what did Melchizedek do to Abraham by giving him Ten, one and zero. Remember, I started with my father, my grand, my great 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 grandfather. Eh? He says, "How many people are in the world?" He said, two people." So he said, "Well, it's an old arrow initiation trick." Who are they? Man and woman. Okay, sorry. Are there any kids here? But I'll, I'll say it in a way that adults will understand. My father used to tell me there's emwe, emwe, ikwe. Anyway, or do. There's a pistol and there's a mortar. And he says, and it's a male and a female. He says, everything in the universe is made that way. So my father, who was, who was, used to tell me when I was a kid, he says, you will understand that and you know how they come together and how you combine them. He's not talking about sex. He's talking about the structure of relationship 
in the world is male and female. If you plant a male, a, a male tree without a female tree somewhere, the female, if you plant a female tree without a male tree, the female tree will never bear. Most people don't even know that. That any tree you plant in your compound that is bearing fruit is drawing from another male tree somewhere. This is, you know, these are things our fathers knew. We, 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 you think it's stupid. You think and God made them male and female, it's just Adam and Eve. It's fundamental to all organic structures. Some are more complex, but it's still very basic. One and zero. So let me give you an example. Why will Melchizedek do that? Because humanity is the summative structure of the way that God makes the world. Or why will Abraham give Melchizedek a 10? Because a 10 is the way God created the world. When God created the universe, he spoke 10 times. It's 10 times. It's in the Bible. Then 10 is the number of what? Of creation, not seven. Seven is the number of rest. I try again, I know. I just messed your religion a little bit. Melchizedek receives a 10 from Abraham. Abraham, what does Abraham know that makes Abraham gives this future humanity one and zero? I will show you how this works because. This Melchizedek stuff is awesome. But remember, 10? When God created the world, he spoke 10 times. When God... Okay, oh, 759. What time am I supposed to finish? Okay, when, when God... When God when, this, is, this, is, this is amazing. When God decided that he was going to Wipe out the world. What generation was Noah? So you don't even know. Huh? You see? That's how? The 10th generation from Adam? From Adam. It is? Yes, it is. Do you see? I'll give you another one. When Abraham does that, he activates something. Later on, you see God comes and changes his name. At that time, his name was Avram, right? Sarah's name was Sarai. What does God, I wish I had a board. But what does God do? Tomorrow, get me a board, okay? What, what, does, what does God do when it comes to help Abraham? That tithe that Abraham gives to Melchizedek becomes his genetic code. So literally, Abraham becomes a new humanity. Show you now. What he gave to God, gave to you from the future. Gave to Melchizedek, who is you, from the future to Abraham's presence. What he gave to him, God came down later on and said, your name shall no longer be Avram, but your name shall be Avraham. He puts the Hebrew he, H, into his name. And then he goes to Sarah and says, your name shall no longer be Sarai, your name shall be Sarah. Everybody puts the Hebrew H. H is the number five. He gives Abraham five and he gives Sarah five. He takes the same ten and gives it to them in order to what? To reorganize the genetic structure so that Abraham can become the representation of humanity. Therefore, it says, by your seed. You, 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 you notice that this interaction with Melchizedek is doing something. This city that's called Salem, we've looked for it. It does not exist. I'm sorry. 
So which means it came from the future. That there were a group of human beings from far away who have not yet come into existence who were vibrating a reality towards Abraham. So that's why the Bible says, and who? Levi paid tithe. It's a genetic transfer. It's not about money. And Levi received tithe. Oh, we were. The tithe in Israel is not about money. It's about is about binary reprogramming of the person's life. God doesn't make mistakes, so now you guys know more than God. So let me ask you, how better are you than the Jews? Since tithe is of the devil and it's a bad thing, how better are you than the Jews? Your children doing more? Your country the better? Your people better? Your movement better? See, that's the problem with people is they don't ask questions. Now, a Christian is not supposed to be bound by tithe. But you got to understand what God's trying to do for us. I pay more than tithe. It doesn't really matter to me. I, I give God according to my increase. I remember when I first started making money, I was giving over 60% of my money over to missions. Nobody in the church does that. So it's not about the tithe. The reason you're fighting over the tithe is because you're a selfish person and 10% looks to you like it's too much. Is there, is there another reason you're fighting with it? Because you think you're giving the pastor too much money. Okay, what are you going to say about me who was giving 40, 60% of my money and yet I never went hungry. What are you going to say about the guy that helped me go through school? Who, who, the guy who had the Kodak films silver. The guy who invented it. He started by giving 10%, then he was giving 20%, and he supported hundreds, if not thousands of missionaries, and then started giving 90% and paying himself a salary. Your issue in your modern world is you hate the church, and you talk a lot about Christians as if they are the problem of the world. Brother Drex is dead. Uh, Dex is dead. The guy who helped me when I was going to school gave me some money. But that's what he did. What would you say about people like that? You're arguing about tithe and they're going, I'm going to support the kingdom. 90% of my increase I will use to support people. I'll keep, I'll, I'll, he started keeping the tithe and giving God the rest. You have to make a good amount of money to do that, right? But it's all about where, where your heart is. If you're fighting over 10%, what's going to happen when you make multi-million dollars and God comes to you and says, give me all of it? You can't because your heart is stuck. Indeed, but this is what we are teaching people. We are teaching people to be selfish. You know? Now, the Bible never tells you to give your capital to anything. It says give your increase. Which means you need to work to make increase. Don't come to me and say, they gave me money to start business. I'm going to give it to you. I will kick you. <laughs> like they say in Nigeria, if I slap you now. But, but well, you know, you know, you know I'll, put, I'll put some sense in that your head. I told my people in my church, no, 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 not do that stuff. God doesn't move that way. The thing is, you want to give me your hundred percent because you're lazy. You don't want to build it up, and they get upset. Say, if you're not lazy, go increase it, and then bring the increase. I will gladly eat the increase with you, and both of us can be happy. <laughs> Amen. So, so we go back to, to making said I do that because it's, it's such a high stuff. If you, if, I, if you don't laugh, then it becomes a headache. So you need to laugh a little bit. That's why I do the stuff, okay? Because, you know, it's the dopamine when you smile 
and the dopamine comes up, it helps you actually understand better. So your seriousness is not helping you, it's helping me. So, <laughs> I'm a father, I'm not, I, I, I know the fight with anyone anymore, you know. This is, this is, this is, so, so if you, if you understand what God's doing, so God does that with Abraham, then when God wants to give Israel what belonged to Egypt, which was Africa, he used ten plagues. And he used it to release what he had given to Egypt that Egypt was not using right. And gave it to Israel. That binary principle is very important. So it's not just about money. But that's a Melchizedek principle. One more. When God wanted to frame the nation of Israel, he gave them 613 commandments, which is 10. 6 plus 1, 7, 7 plus 3, 10. There are 613 commandments which equals 10. In order to make what? To frame their DNA for receiving and manifesting the Messiah in creation. Okay? Okay, you're, you're tired. I can see your face now. You're tired. I think we need to stop. Oh, mama, you want to go home now? <laughs> oh, that's a, that's one. No. So, 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 as we begin, as we as, you, as as we're dealing with this, you're going to, you're going to understand that the principle of Melchizedek is actually embedded in creation. So it's what we God embedded that in us. So when God became human, he wanted to be initiated into our priesthood. The priesthood of humanity. That's why God became human. But you can't become a priest unless you participate in the life and suffering of the people. They became human and what? And had to go through what? The gate of death, gate of suffering, and the gate of resurrection, which is a birth into a superstructure of what it means to be human. Jesus, Jesus did not rise from the grave as God. Try again. Jesus didn't come out of the grave as God. He came out of the grave as a human being. Here's the problem with a lot of view of humanity. Uh, somebody, somebody was having an argument with, uh, with me someday and he said, if Jesus did not commit sin and didn't fall, didn't make any mistake, then he was not human. I said to him, I said, the problem you're having is you're defining humanity as a necessity for sin. So if that is the case, what was Adam when he had no sin? What you are living is not the human life. You're defining humanity from the fall. That's not how God defines humanity. Actually, Jesus was the real human being because he was without sin and he was without death and he couldn't be conquered by death. That's what the real human being is. Yes. So the mystery is this several things, this binary principle that is a genetic transformational technology that comes to us because of the way God structures the universe. Then there's a second one, which is that of bread and wine. Bread and wine is the way that God tunes the life of his people. If you notice, 
in all the years, except for the case of Noah, but it's a genetic structure all the way to the 10th generation that, that does what? That releases a new humanity into creation. Yeah? But it's all Melchizedek structure. Because those people are the people that God goes to and goes, Noah was not a Jew. <laughs> Noah was a human being. And by the way, did you notice that during Noah's time, I, I'm just talking, right? But during Noah's time, that the watchers, all those guys, if you know anything about this, these people, these angelic beings, were doing genetic manipulation, right? That's what a lot of books show. Everyone thinks it's sex. They were not having sex. Angels can't have sex. What they can do is technology. So they took the beautiful women and they started using other spermatic structures to fertilize their eggs. It's written, by the way, in some old books. This is why Africans make sex the biggest problem. Everything, sex, sex, sex. The only Pentecostal sin in the world. You can lie, steal, cheat, gossip, manipulate. As long as you don't touch a woman, you are perfect. And women, are, women accept it too because you are the problem. Why would you accept stuff like that? That the only time a man is a sinner is if he touches a woman. And leave it alone. How do you say, Lord, help me? How do you say in Yoruba? No, no, no. Oluwa what? Huh? Romilowo. Ah, I, I remember that word. Oluwa Romilowo. I remember that. I remember that. <laughs> say, God, leave me. No, I'm joking. Uh, uh, language is funny. But anyway. So, so look at how God does this. There's a linguistic structure whereby with sound, the Melchizedek frequency is used to tune humanity. Okay? God speaks ten times to speak. God speaks ten generations and then he speaks to Noah. Abraham, God, in order to change him, says, I am, you, from now on, your name is no longer Avram. Your name is Abraham. Your name is no longer Sarah. Sarai, your name is Sarah. Mountain, God speaks ten times, forms Israel. Voice. The person of Jesus Christ is called the Word. Every true Melchizedek priesthood has a sound. I could, I could do a lot of this. Uh, you can't participate in the priesthood without language, without a specific kind of sound. A linguistic structure that regenes, restructured, re rearranges the way you are the sound of your cells hear the voice of God. Mm. Alters your capacity to hear. Mm. We now know that language is coded in the cell. That not specific language, but that the universal language is coded in the cell. You can learn any language in the world. There's not a person that can't learn language. People just get stuck. I speak about 15, but that's okay. Because nobody told me as a kid that I couldn't speak languages. But it's the linguistic tuning. See, I got about, and we don't to talk science right now. So let's, let's step back. I just finished a whole course on the DNA and the book of life. 70 hours of teaching. Wait, 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 come on, see, come on, see. So, 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 why is God talking to everyone whose, what, whose DNA and genes is changing? Why 
Why is God doing that? You're going to find out tomorrow. So let's just move one more step. Jesus Christ is the word of God, right? The Logos, not the Rhema. This is where I'm going to hear from Pentecostals. I'll get my, one of my ch- sons in the church will say, Papa, you're going to get head mail. Okay, so, but, but this is where Pentecostals don't get it. The logo, the logo structure is what tunes your DNA and aligns it with the nature of God. The rheumatic structure is what breaks down what has been created in order to rearrange it. Um, so, so, if you're walking with Melchizedek, so I'll continue. So, you got this stuff where God comes to Abraham, calls him, speaks to him. Everything is about conversation. Did you know that spiritual DNA, even physical DNA is about conversations? Do you know your conversations tune your DNA actually can make you sick or make or keep you alive? So language is important. So when you start talking, so who is Melchizedek? Let's say, right. Like I said before, Melchizedek is what? Melchizedek in the full sense of Melchizedek is the future humanity that has gone through life. So when God is looking at them, he's looking at a being. Are you ready for this? He's looking at a people in whom the pains of God, the tears of God, has been cleansed and removed. Because you know, the world, you, me, we cause God pain, right? In the Melchizedek being, all the pains of God, all the tears of God, all the disturbances we created in the system, all the disappointments of God have been removed. It is a, it's as though God never, it's as though the world, the world returns to God in what? In pristine nature. So it is you from the future standing before Abraham. So Abraham is drawing from the future. I will give you one verse from the Bible that will put all of this in your mind and your, your, your eyes will be opened. Ready? Jesus said, Abraham rejoiced to see my day. He saw it and he was glad. When? Right there. And your, the day is not just the day Jesus came, it's the day of the people that Jesus becomes a part of. It's your day. You know what the Bible says? And the, the prophet says, Behold, like I, Jeremiah, uh, Isaiah says that. Behold, I and the children whom the Lord has given me, we are a sign unto the Lord. Okay? And then talking about Jesus, he says, he, says, he saw the labors of his hand and the labors of his, of his, of his suffering. And then he says, says this about Jesus. <laughs> he says, these are, you know, that he may bring many children to the Father. Abraham saw that because you stood before Abraham. It wasn't Jesus standing before Abraham. We all stood there. One more stop before we we come back tomorrow, we talk some more. Do you realize that the Bible says, we're just having fun, right? The Bible says Jesus Christ is the Lamb of God 
Let's read it. Jesus Christ is the Lamb of God who was slain before the foundation of the world. Jesus is not the foundation of the world. Look at me. It's okay. Look incredulous if you want to. It's okay. Jesus is not the foundation of the world. God is not the foundation of the world. Jesus was slain before the foundation. The Greek word is apo, away from the foundation. That's what the Bible says. I didn't say it. See, sometimes it's just good to read the Bible and not, not try to make up stuff. The Greek word is apo, to move away from, or before something existed. So here's the thing. One of the things you're going to read in the book, if you buy the book, you're going to read me say, the Bible prohibits a father from killing their children. You know, in the pagan religion, parents, fathers slew their children for sacrifice. Their son. But in the Bible, God makes it very clear that it's not allowed. You're not allowed to kill your son. This is the reason why people say, oh Jesus, God killed his son for us. That's a very terrible word. God didn't kill Jesus for you. You don't have a Bible that says that the father killed his son for you. See, and that's, people talk about it all the time. Oh, didn't his father, his father, oh, he came. Jesus said, no one takes my life from me. Not even the father. I do this because I want to. I'm going to show you an example when I'll go back. It's good, to, it's good to connect scripture, right? Are you okay? Please be okay. You know, you know, in the Bible, Abraham is told to sacrifice his son, right? Because Abraham came from a child sacrifice culture. Abraham's parents were the worshippers of Moloch. It was part of his culture to sacrifice the firstborn or the one you like because that's what God will accept. Moses said, he says, you either choose this God, I mean, what's it, Joshua said, you choose this God or you choose the God your father, the gods your fathers worship on the other side. <laughs> Did you see how, you know, you know, one of the biggest issues with Israel, doesn't matter where Israel is, they like going back to idolatry, just like the Igbo men are doing right now. It's just part of the... And so I laugh when people say, well, I said, that's, it's in their blood. Jews do... Do you know what Jews were doing when the when they guys from, uh, from, from a Palestinian attacked them? You know what they were doing? On the tabernacle, the day of tabernacle, they had the idol from India, Shiva, and they were dancing around it. They were dancing and worshipping Shiva when those guys attack the land. And you don't think that that's God's judgment. It's in our blood. We like to run back. We think that every time we, every time we suffer and it looks like God's not answering us, what do we do? Should he kill? Should he kill? <laughs> At least I can say this for the Yorubas. They know exactly what they're doing. Igbos don't know anything about idols. They only go when they need it. <laughs> they are not loyal. <laughs> and that's why it doesn't work for them for long. It's transactional. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you, you, you wouldn't do this for me. I'm gonna, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just silly people. It works for the people who believe it. Even man doesn't believe that. Don't bring him to your shrine. No. He will mess it up. I'm promising you, don't take him to your village. you will mess it up because he doesn't believe in that stuff. He's just wanting to get something. Like you who are getting converted to Islam. Yes. <laughs> leave that alone. It's transactional. I mean, I, sorry, I'm not putting any other tribe down, but you know, the tribes, other tribes believe in what they're doing. 
and it works. Try try a rubber man with that with that that stuff that that that, that stuff of washing the washing making doing the, the herbs and mixing it. Commit adultery and find out what happens. <laughs> that stuff is believed strongly. The Abraham man's like, uh, is this gonna work? <laughs> what is he gonna do for me? I believe for 10 minutes. <clears throat> I'm sorry. I'm, I, I, should, I, I hope the evil people don't get offended here. It's true now. It's true. You know, it's just, it's just, it's, it's a, so, <laughs> it's so serious walking towards me. I'm like, <laughs> is he one of them? <laughs> We're going to have fun, you know. We're going to have fun. I've, I've been preaching for the past three months almost every day. So this I'm having fun. Okay, Since, not three months, since August. Beginning of August. August, September, October. Yeah? November. You know. But let's, let's get back to it. <laughs> what way was I? <laughs> Abraham. So Abraham, Abraham goes to sacrifice Isaac. He literally goes to sacrifice Isaac. Was prepared to kill the boy because, like, oh, this this is what God asked, you know. And so he took the boy, goes up, and puts the sacrifice, arranges everything, ties the boy who's a teenager. You can tell Abraham was a warrior. He was not. He was not a person to play with. Abraham was a a marshal. Was able to train soldiers. So he wasn't somebody to play with. They came from Or of Chaldea. You know. So he <laughs> died. The boy's probably playing. You know, like one day I was wrestling with when my son was turning teenager and he was bulking up. It was like I was wrestling with him. Oh, I'm going to take you down, Papa. I just looked at him and I said, really? And he just kept doing that stuff. Before he knew it, he was on the ground. <laughs> How you do that? You cheated. I said, The two things <laughs> old people know. We know the style, but we also know tricks. Yes. Say, why would you do that? Now I'm now show me, show me how you did it. No, 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 I'm not showing you because that's my stuff. <laughs> Just in case you decide one day. <laughs> he was like, no, you cheated, Dad. I'm not denying it. Of course I did. You're getting big now, and you're taller than me. I won't let you put me on the ground. <laughs> so anyway, so, so he ties him and puts him on the, on the stop, and the boy is sitting there. And he goes to kill the boy. And he hears a voice that calls his name, right? Don't touch the boy. And the Bible says, he looked behind him. I like the Hebrew. The Hebrew says he saw behind him. He looked backward. He didn't turn his head. He saw backward. What did he was looking at? Where was he looking at? Looking before the foundation of the world. Things that God did with Abraham brings the sacrifice from outside of creation and brings it it's tied in a ticket. A ticket is like a strings. But that string is used to refer to the zodiac system. It ties the head of Aries. Brings it from outside. Just in case you don't get it. You see, a lot of Christians think these are all demonic stuff. But isn't it the lamb that leads the head of the year? Ram, lamb, same thing. Brings the lamb, the ram actually, ram and sacrifices the ram. Oh, by the way, the Jewish year begins in Nisan, right? Yeah. Nisan is a ram. The ordinary Zodiac here begins with what? Aries. Aries is a lamb. 
By doing that, I want to talk about Melchizedek. By doing that, Abraham became the ruler of the star systems. So God literally gave him the... And he possessed the heavens and the earth. Is your head okay? But, but, but look at what God's doing, Abraham. This is your father. He stands before you before you came into existence. But before he does, you know, look at his son. Takes his son, sacrifice, and God takes him backward and draws from the lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world and brings it into his creation, sets his line for the manifestation or the reemergence, if you may, of the Melchizedek priesthood in creation. Are you okay? Already what God has done is embedded in Abraham the possibility that all human, every human family will be blessed by his seed. So everything he does from that moment on has cosmic impact. So God told him, do what? Go up to heaven, come, come outside and count the stars. So I'm saying, oh, Abraham came. One, two, three, four, five. I can't count it, Father. It's too much. And God, like, that's not what happened. Literally, God took him up to the heavens and said to him, he said to him, God said to him, God said to him, decipher, it's not count, decipher the stars. Because the Hebrew word sefer is the word from which we get decipher or a cipher. Because it says, decode the heaven. Do the math. Decode it. He said, for so shall your seed be. Literally, that's why Jacob had 12 sons and one. Anyway, what do I know? Just a Sunday school teacher. Just a Sunday school teacher. Just a Sunday school teacher. But what's your, so, so this Melchizedek we're talking about is, 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 it's you. Let me, let, me, let me go end with this and then we'll come back again. If the Lamb of God was slain before the foundation of the world, right? I said it's not a foundation. Why do I say it's not a foundation? Because he's not a human being. He's God. God is not the foundation of anything. Oh, look at your face. Why can God be a foundation of anything? It means God is underneath. The Bible doesn't say that. The Bible says, I'm going to quote the Bible, you know, Proverbs chapter 10, verse 25. The righteous are the foundation of worlds. The Bible may not say that, but that's what the Hebrew said, that the Righteous are the sword, mystery, foundation of worlds. That means God laid the foundation of the world by the righteous who were going to believe. So that means God brought a future foundation, put it on the ground. That every, every time someone becomes a believer, someone knows God, there's a new foundation placed underneath creation. It's there. I know your English is not going to tell you some of that stuff, but the righteous are the foundation of worlds. That's what that passage actually says. So that's a step back a bit. The righteous. You are. Jesus is not. You are. So if there are no righteous people raised in creation, creation will perish. It explains to you why Jesus came to make you righteous. <laughs> I love this. Oh, Lua Mia. 
Aber sind wir. Look at me like. Ah, God is good. God is good. Here is, here is what happened, and we're going to end with that. Since the father is not allowed to kill their son, and instead of doing that, God brought the lamb from before outside and brought it to Abraham. And Abraham slew the lamb instead of his son. So who released the life of the lamb before the world was created? Only a priest can do it. The father can do it. If he's a lamb, then who's the priest? You ready for this? Because this is where we're going to stop. The priest is the group of people that God brought from the future to serve as priest before the world was made, which was us. You cannot have any other person doing it the way you're going to know how this works. Who killed Jesus when he was on earth? Who? Who killed Jesus when, who nailed Jesus, who killed Jesus and nailed him to the cross? Human beings. There's a reason why Jews and Gentiles were involved in killing Jesus. Because he had to be a human being. It cannot be God. It had to be a human because only the priest is allowed to do it. The same person that killed him on earth is the person who killed him before, but it's the pure. The difference is this one is a sinner releasing what? Death. But the death becomes life. That one before creation is you after you've been purified, before you were even made. The way God pictured you before you before the world was made. So he brought you from the non-existent future and brought you to before creation. And you were the one who slew the lamb, which means you were there and the one. You were participant in releasing the life of the lamb that, cre that formed creation so that you can appear. The way that God looks at us, the way the Father looks at us is so different from how we see ourselves. Why was the Lamb slain before the foundation of the world? In order to make us what? Kings and priests. And this is important because the Melchizedek structure is the reason for which the worlds were made. Not the ironic priesthood. I am an ironic priest. Be good, but I will tell you how he got transferred to Aaron. Because he's there. And why, how Aaron serves and what, how it happened. But the, the problem is, the problem with, 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 with a lot of people is they understand that it was for the priesthood of humanity that God made the world. God created the world so that sons can be manifested. God allowed the son to become the lamb that we who came from the future slew so that the world can be created for the manifestation of sons. In the structure of, 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 the, of, of, of priesthood, right? At least in the culture we know. You can't be a priest unless you're a son. If you've not raised up to the level of sonship, and by sonship we mean inheritance. We are all heirs of Christ, right? Everyone of us. There's neither male nor female in Christ. So when we use the term, we're using it inclusively, right? If we go back to the beginning, to, to the before the beginning, and we see that the second person of the Godhead became the lamb. And the lamb became the head of the year. That's what it is. That's why, you, that's why the zodiac begins with areas. That's why the Jewish, the Jewish calendar begins with, with Nisan, which is lamb. 
if and what's God, why is God doing this? So that means then that when God was all alone as God, encountering himself within himself, by himself, through himself, God was saying, I need sons. Why do I need sons? I need people that are going to be reflect me. People in whom I will become indwelled, fully indwelled. People that will reflect my glory. I, really, I need a reflexive structure where I can see myself. But throughout the fall, God could not see himself the way he's supposed to. It is after the lamb re-entered creation, repeating what happened before the beginning, being slain by, this time not by perfected human being, but by fallen humanity. Because a priest must be human. Comes into creation and releases us. But we already released in the mind of God. So you and I, this is the reason for Melchizedek. These people who are sitting in front of me. These people who are singing praise to God. These people who are supposed to be priests. That's our, but we have failed in our priesthood because we've become more prophetic than we've been priests. We failed in our sonship Because if you're not a son, you cannot be a priest. Right? You can't even be a king if you're not a son. So the idea of kings and priests is the same thing, sons and priests. But it's made possible because of who you are based on the original construct of the divine priesthood. All human beings can participate in the priesthood of Melchizedek, but all human beings cannot participate in the priesthood of Aaron. And the mystery of the priesthood of the priesthood, the priesthood of the order of Melchizedek is that that is what? That is the purified, sanctified being wherein all of God's suffering has been removed. That brings back the joy of God to God. That brings back the reflection of God without stain back to God. God looks and goes, there I am. So Christ became our high priest because he is the first one to restore that. When he come, came through his death, he can present himself. Oh, by the way, when he presents himself before God, when Jesus Christ dies and goes to heaven, presents himself before God. He doesn't present himself only as the son of God. Because now he's the head of a priesthood order, right? He presents himself as all of us. Because he's the head of our order. He cannot just go for himself. And since he has overcome and he has what? He has, he has died, purified, sanctified, resurrected, and is glorified. What God seeing in Christ is the actual Melchizedek priest. The priesthood that he envisioned when the lamb was first slain. This is us. So that one. You gotta understand, this is us. This is us in the pure reflective glory of the Father. This is us looking like Jesus. This is us. This is Jesus hasn't become a member of our priesthood, presenting himself as us before the Father. So Jesus leaves us the same order. He doesn't do something new. He takes the same thing. He gives us communion. 
He gives us wine and bread. See, when you do this stuff, you remember me. How are we remembering him? Who is he? We're not just remembering that Jesus is a human being who died. We're remembering him as the high priest of an order initiated into us. And that initiation, we think in baptism we get initiated to Christ, but in his humanity, Jesus got initiated into our humanity. That gives us the right to stand before God. In Christ, with Christ, for Christ. So he is. That's the only way in which Christ has now become Melchizedek. But he's a priesthood after the order. Melchizedek is us. Thank you so much, Lord. so much. Uh, please, can we invite people tomorrow? Please, it's very important. Um, I know we are late. Pastor Samson said something that the Lord told him to... What did he say? The Lord told you again. Quickly, please, quickly. That priesthood we have not seen, yes. that um, we'll be bringing forth that dimension of that priesthood to right. us, right. and by that reason, we'll be activated. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we give you praise. We we'll bless your name, O oh God. We we'll glorify your name and magnify you. We we'll thank you, Father, for today. We we'll ask that you bless the bread and the wine. Hallelujah. We we'll pray that you take every single person here home. Um, if you think you can't go home, let Pastor Samson or Pastor Uche know 